Good morning. Today I'll be reading from Rick Renner's book, Sparkling Gems from the Greek. We can talk about the word, but does God's word fill at home in our lives? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Colossians 3, 16. Rick writes, many years ago when I was speaking in a particular church, the pastor informed me that because the church couldn't afford a hotel for me, I'd be staying that week with a family from his church. When I arrived at this family's home, the host met me at the front door, showed me my bedroom and pointed out the bedroom rather and pointed out the bathroom and the kitchen. Then the entire family ignored me for the rest of the week. If I asked the family members a question, they pretended not to hear me. When it was time to eat, they informed me that it wasn't their responsibility to feed me and that I could just take care of myself because they weren't there to nurse me. Words cannot describe how uncomfortable I was in that home. Everything that family did let me know that they wished I wasn't there. When that week concluded, I was so happy to move out of that miserable predicament. I pledged that I would never let myself be put in that kind of situation again. How about you? Have you ever stayed as a guest in a home where the people made you feel very unwelcome and unwanted? I remember that when this happened, I was studying Colossians 3, verse 16, where it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The chilly reception I felt in that home caused me to look at my own heart and ask, What kind of reception have I given the word of God in my life? I wanted to know, Have I given God's word the kind of reception it deserves? Or have I ignored it and given it the cold shoulder? Does God's word feel at home in my life? Or does it feel unwanted? Have I rolled out the red carpet and given God's word a grand reception, making it clear that I love the word and am privileged to have it dwelling in me, in my heart? In Colossians 3.16, Paul tells us that the word of Christ should dwell in us richly. I decided to go to the Greek New Testament and to study the word dwell so I could determine what kind of reception I had given the God's word in my own life. Now, as I read these Greek words, please bear with me. I'm not a Greek scholar. I found that the word dwell is taken from enoikio. The word enoikio is a compound of the words en and oikos. The word en means in, and the word oikos is the Greek word for a house. When the two words are compounded together, they form the word enoikio, which means to dwell in a house. This is the same Greek word used in both New Testament literature and secular literature to signify someone who takes up permanent residency in a home. The person is so at home and contented in this new location that he has chosen to make it his so to make it his permanent dwelling place for the rest of his life. So when Paul tells us to let the word of Christ dwell in us, he is beseeching us to give God's word such a grand, welcoming reception that it literally feels at home in us and therefore comes to take up permanent residence. Does the word of God have this kind of place in your life, in my life? Does it really dwell in us richly? Does it feel at home and comfortable in our lives? Or is the word of God treated like a stranger that is occasionally welcomed into our lives as a visitor? Be honest. Let us make today the day that the word of God comes to take up permanent residence in our lives. Help, help us, Lord, to throw the doors open Roll out the red carpet and welcome the Word of God as a new permanent resident in our heart. I confess that the Word of God dwells in me richly. It has such a good, it has such a grand reception in my life that it literally finds or feels at home in me. Because I give it this place of prominence in my life, it produces phenomenal amounts of spiritual wealth in my life. I have so many spiritual wishes 
riches inside me that they continually flow forth to enrich those around me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Lord, how can I ever thank you enough for the power of your word? I am so honored that you should place such a gift in my life. Help me to appreciate it, value it, and give it the kind of recognition and reception it deserves. I want to make your word a top priority in my life. I want it to feel welcomed, wanted, and deeply loved. Starting today, I open my heart wider than ever, wider than ever before, and ask that your word come to richly dwell inside me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'd like to thank the Willises for allowing me the privilege of sitting at their dining room table and doing these devotions. Continuing God's blessings.